Hey everyone, welcome to another Zwift race analysis video. Today I'm back with another Crit City race with category enforcement. Here we are on 10 laps of the Bell Lap, which is the reverse of Downtown Dolphin. So you go up the not really KLM. They consider it a KLM, but it's not really a KLM. So here you can see that based off my power graph that is below, that I'm not really going that hard. It's been a pretty mellow race. So I've just been sitting in most of the time and then occasionally I get a bit dropped so then I do a small surge. But other than that, it was a pretty mellow race. In the race, there were a few high ranked riders with scores of high 100s and low 100s. Then the majority were in the high 200s to 300s to 400s. So. The best riders in the race were Dennis Shaniger and Danny Mossman, who had a rank of 129 and 162. You can see Dennis is the one in the yellow jersey, and Danny is just coming into the camera now, and he is in the blue cryogen kit. One thing that I noticed immediately was that they were both wearing the Zwift Racing League division winners um, helmet, which means they're some of the top riders in their category. Coming through this final arch here, I'm pretty worried because I don't have a power up right now. So I'm hoping for just any power up because that'll definitely be better than just a mini plus. And here I get featherweight power up. It's not the best, but it'll still benefit me because I can hit a pretty high wasp kick with the featherweight power up. I didn't really want a really hard race because um, the next day I was going to be doing the Zwift Insider Rebel Race Series with around 100 riders in the B category. Some of them that are pretty strong and it's a pretty tough course. So I didn't want my legs too tired before that. You can see here that all of a sudden I'm pretty much off the back of the, back of the group, which got me pretty worried because this is not great since we're coming into the final half mile here. And something that I did not know was that Danny Mossman had actually started sprinting already and he was already off the front of the group starting his sprint. That basically spread the race out a ton and I was left chasing behind. I had a small opportunity to just grab onto the group a bit and right here you see that the group starts to come back together. Danny is still off the front and he's going at a pretty high pace. It's much faster than the group speed right now, which is 33 miles per hour-ish. And here riders are already starting their sprint, which is pretty early. And I see Dennis up front, which means that I have to go. This is when the best rider is starting to start their sprint. So here, I'm just trying to bridge the gap between these two riders. I'm giving it everything I've got. I don't even realize that Jay Reynolds is even close behind me. And three riders with aero power-ups just fly right by us. I ended up in fifth, which is pretty good, but not ideal since I was looking for a Zwift power gain. And Dennis had already done the 30 mile race before this, so. I wasn't expecting him to win the race, as you can probably imagine that his legs would be tired from a 30 mile race. In a previous Swift Racing League season, I raced against Dennis and I believe he won pretty much every race because of his insanely strong 1 minute to 15 second power. So this part where Jay Reynolds and the other riders behind him, this is when, this is a great example of how powerful the aero boosts are. You can see here that all three of them are using aero boosts and they're probably going around 40 miles per hour and they just fly right by. You can see here that, that the riders who were around me, I was using a feather power up. The rider in the blue jersey was wearing, was using a truck boost. 
Okay, let's take a quick look at these lift power results. You can see here that the race was won by three hundred three tenths of a second and I ended up finishing five tenths of a second behind first place, Danny Mossman, and quite a few riders got a gain, but it wasn't quite enough to get me a gain. I ended with a score of 220, which is not ideal, but I guess that's just how Zwift Racing works. Sometimes you get a gain, sometimes you don't. Stay tuned for a video analysis of the Zwift Insider Rebel Race Series race, which should be coming out in the next few days once I finish the race. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe.